How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today we're going to be looking at bearing maintenance, basically maintenance for your wheel. How to repack those bearings, what you need to do, and how to inspect the brakes, and how to adjust them so that you can go down the road safely and to be able to stop properly. So this should help walk you through the process because this is something that you should do every 12,000 miles or once a year for the towable RVs, the travel trailers and the fifth wheel. So this can not only save you money if you do this yourself, it can also save you time not having to go to the RV dealership and wait on their, their service. So uh, this is something if you don't mind getting your hands dirty, uh, can save you a lot of time and money. So let's start off by removing the wheel after we have jacked it up and safely supported it. We remove the wheel and then we can just pop that outer hub off. And then we can remove the cotter pin and then that will allow us to take the castle nut off which is what holds in the washer and the outer bearing, and then the drum can come off too. This is where we can see how dirty of a job it's going to be. We can start cleaning off the grease from the spindle. We wanna get rid of all the old grease and check to see if there is any damage on the spindle itself. At this point, we can take a look at the brakes, give them a, a quick inspection to see if anything needs to be replaced. So the magnet there in the middle has four dots. Those dots are actually the wear indicator for that magnet. If they're worn down to where you can't really see those dots or they're starting to disappear, that magnet needs to be replaced. And oftentimes, rather than just replacing the magnet, a lot of people just replace the entire assembly like we're going to be doing today. We're gonna to be installing the automatic adjusting brakes because ours are such a pain to be able to adjust because of the way that our axle is set up. You can see the offset on our axle and because of that it makes it really hard to get to that port on how to adjust them in the back. I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. But while we're inspecting things we can take a look at that brake pad. So that brake pad usually starts off around 3 16 so it's, it's not super thick uh, but when you've worn that down to a 16th of an inch, 1 16th of an inch, it's time to replace it. So if it's worn down that low it's time to replace your brakes. Since we're changing out our brakes to automatic adjusting brakes, we just have five bolts to pull off these 12 inch electric brakes. Once we've removed the hardware, we can pull the assembly off, cut the wires and set the old brake aside. Now we're gonna simply bolt on the new assembly and tighten down the hardware like you would a wheel, alternating in a star pattern. Now, let me give you a quick rundown of how electric brakes work. So that way, as you're adjusting them, you have a, a good idea of what you're adjusting. So when you press the brake pedal, it activates the magnet, which sticks to the drum. And as the drum is spinning, it swings the arm that the magnet is attached to, which pushes the brake pad against the outside of the drum. And that's how it slows everything down. So for your typical maintenance of the brakes, if you're not replacing the entire assembly like we're doing here, you wanna adjust it. So the, the magnet's checking out good, there's enough brake pad on there to last you another year, you wanna adjust it so that brake pad, as soon as you press on the brakes, it's contacting the outside of that drum. So there's a little port on the back of the brake assembly that you can pop off, and then there's going to be a way that you can stick in a brake spoon and be able to adjust that, that little device in there to move those brake pads out so that it contacts at the earliest possible time when you press on the brakes. You don't necessarily need a, a brake spoon. You can use a screwdriver. Uh, it might be easier for me to show you since we have the brakes taken apart and I can show you from the, the outside, from the, the drum side, uh, what you would be adjusting if you're doing it from that back port. You need to be able to have the wheel on to see how it's spinning to be able to do it. And that's why you need to use that back port. Ours was a pain because if you see the, the way our axle is in there, uh, I even made a custom spoon, brake spoon to be able to do this, but it was still so difficult to try and get in there and adjust it properly. These auto adjusting brakes is just gonna make it to where I don't have to worry about maintaining that and having to worry about that adjustment. Now to adjust your brakes, you want to have the wheel be able to freely spin and you're going to spin that adjustment from the, the back. And as you do that, it's gonna become really difficult to be able to spin that wheel anymore. Once you have it at that point, you wanna back your adjustment off so that you can start spinning that wheel again. 
once you have it at that position, you want to leave it because that's the earliest time that your brake pad is going to be able to contact that drum when you press your brake pedal. So having them properly adjusted will give you the best braking possible for that system and your RV. You don't want to have too much room till that brake pad contacts the drum and you don't want it dragging, creating a lot of heat and resistance as you're going down the road. But with the new brakes that we're putting in there, the auto adjusting ones, every time you brake when you're going forward, it auto adjusts so you don't have to do this all the time. Now we can finish installing the brakes, which we need to connect the wires. There's no polarity on the wires, so it doesn't matter. That's why they're not color coded. Uh, we're gonna connect both of these wires together with these butt splice connectors and they are a, a heat shrink type of connector. So we can heat those up with the heat gun and they give you a nice weather tight seal on the wires. Now that's it for our brake maintenance and our brake assembly. Let's move back over to the bearings. I wanna give you a quick visual though of what we're doing and what we're installing inside of this drum. So you can see that we're gonna install a new seal. That's gonna hold the grease inside of that drum where we need it. Uh, we have our inner bearing that's gonna go on there. We have our outer bearing and you can see how the drum is going to spin uh, freely on these bearings. But we'll start with popping the seal off the back of the drum. I'm gonna put a link down in the description to all the tools and components and uh, brakes that we've used in this video. So if you're looking for anything, it'll be down in the description. This is when we clean everything off. We wanna get rid of all the old grease, wiping it up, getting it all off of there. Uh, and then we can use brake cleaner to get rid of the last of the residue that's on there so that it's not messing with the, the magnet or the brake pads. Once we have everything clean and all the grease is gone, we can start repacking the bearings. Uh, I have this little bearing packer that I, I thought it was great. It did a fantastic job getting all that grease inside of the bearings. You want it packed inside of it. It's pretty simple to use. You can shoot the grease right in the bottom and then you drop your bearing in the top and then you force the grease through it and it goes through all the inner workings of the bearing. You wanna pack both bearings and then add a, a thin layer of grease to the spindle. Now, I forgot to mention, before you pack everything with grease, you wanna, you wanna check out your equipment. You wanna look at your bearings after you've gotten them all cleaned up and you wanna look for any uh, pitting or any kind of discoloration to see if you need to replace those. Also on the spindle, you wanna to see if there's any problems with that, any discoloration, pitting. And also inside of the hub, you have a couple of races, basically uh, the metal that this is gonna sit in. Those can be replaced too if there's any discoloration or, or pitting. So you wanna visually inspect those to make sure you're not putting in something that you might have a problem with, but uh, you wanna fully pack these with grease. Now, if you don't have a bearing packer, you can actually use your hand. A lot of people pr prefer to do it that way. So you put a lot of grease on your hand and then you just work it into the inner workings of your bearing. You don't wanna to just topically apply the grease. You want it on the inside of the bearing and get some on the outside. Too. This, this thing just needs to be packed and greased to operate properly. So once we put a little bit of grease on the inside of that drum, we can drop our inner bearing in there just before we put our seal on. Now that we have that assembled, we can install the drum and I like to add a little bit of grease in case the bearings need to, to pull it in. Then we can put in the, the outer bearing. You don't want to overdo it, but you want plenty of grease in here. Then we put in the washer and then the castle nut. You should torque down the castle nut to 50 pounds and spin the drum so that you seat the bearings in there. Then you wanna back off that castle nut so it can spin freely. And then you put in that cotter pin so the castle nut can't come off. Then the last thing we have to do is to put our caps on so that it can uh, keep the grease in there, not allow any of that grime from the road and dust and dirt to get in there and mess with our bearings. They do make a tool to be able to put these on, but uh, I didn't have a tool. So I just took one of the old caps and I just cut it so it can just go over this and I can just hammer this and be able to put on the, the cap without denting it. So uh, it worked out really well and was, was really easy. So that in a nutshell is pretty much the maintenance you need to do for your towable RV, uh, for your travel trailers and your fifth wheels. Uh, you can see why some people like going to the oil bath because you remove um, the necessity to do this every 12,000 miles or once a year. You just check the oil in the oil bath uh, rather than having to do this maintenance all the time. So you can just check your brakes. If you have the automatically adjusting brakes, then 
it brings your maintenance down significantly. Let's be honest, less maintenance is more time getting out there to go RVing and more time to do the things that you love. So I'm considering going with an, an oil bath in the future, but uh, for now, our maintenance is done for the year, so I don't really have to worry about it. So I think that's gonna do it for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you in the next video.